All right, hi, I am Dale Benwalt here with Erica Lucas, founder of, co-founder of Stitch Crew. Um, you help out a lot of startups uh, in Oklahoma and uh, helping them sort of navigate what they ought to do when they get started. Um, and you're, uh, Stitch Crew wrote up a, a pretty good blog post, uh, an article about the CARES Act, which was passed by Congress and signed by the president uh, and how that could help out some uh, startup companies. Um, uh, there were three things specifically that you mentioned, uh, the loan program, uh, helping with, uh, with employees, and um, really, let, you know, I'll, I'll let you sort of get into it. Uh, what, what can startups expect to, um, uh, to, to get out of this, Bill? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, so I think that there, there's a lot, right, in the $2 trillion <laughs> uh, package. But I think that three components that are more specific to startups or really small businesses. One, of course, is the SBA Lending Act that will enable companies to, to take out loans, at, um, which could potentially convert into grants. So that's probably the, the largest one. And then obviously there is the uh, tax deferral that you can defer your taxes for this year and then pay them in, in consecutive years or, or future years. And then there's the employee reten retention credit um, that, that startups can also access. Though it's important that if you take that, you may not uh, qualify for other programs. So it's, it's I think regulators, um, even the SBA and the Treasury are still trying to figure out what applies where and, and kind of the minutia and the um, little details. So we're still waiting for some clarification on a lot of these, but that's, that's the just. Got it. And why, why would startups be vulnerable um, in a time like this? Obviously they, they would just like any business, but um, mm -hmm. You've mentioned before that there um, are specific things that a startup has to really worry about in this kind of economy, in this climate. Yeah. So obviously the first one is cash flow. Um, and it really depends on how you finance to date your company. Obviously for venture backed companies that maybe did get funding and have a longer runway, um, they're facing other type of challenges, perhaps. It also depends on the industry and the business model that they're dealing with. Um, but they might have a little bit of a longer runway because they raise funding to be able to take them into uh, however long. But if you are not venture back and you're growing through revenue or you're bootstrapped, obviously cash flow is king. And a lot of these companies don't have not even two weeks of runway. Um, some, not, a lot of them, not more than a month. So having that cash flow is critical. And you know, we we talk a lot about the SBA and and all of these loans that are going to be available, and that's great. And and people need to access those. But what we are not talking about enough, I think, is just the other aspects of the business that are also affected. You know low sales, uh, cancel meetings, cancel contracts, cancel travel, all of those things affect startups, um, you know, in, in multiple areas. And you've, I'm sure, heard that firsthand from the companies in, in your cohort and you know, the people participating in uh, the Thunder Launchpad. And I know you do a lot of outreach um, beyond that, talking mm -hmm. with uh, startups and uh, VC folks, private equity and the people on both sides of that funding equation um, mm -hmm. probably seen it firsthand. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the latest news that I, I wanted to make sure that we talked about is Axios today is reporting that um, uh, a um, that the, the CARES Act previously um, might have hindered um, companies from receiving some of the, some of this aid if they were backed by venture capital. Um, uh, because of the affiliated um, uh, entity or affiliated company rule. Um, tell me a little bit about that. What, why, why, would, why would the CARES Act not apply um, to, uh, to some of these companies, at least last week? Sure. 
So the SBA under regular circumstances has a standard um, qualification clause that companies and lenders need to look at when, um, when qualifying companies. And basically that, um, that eligibility or that classification, you have to have less than 500 employees to, to be able to, to be eligible to that. Um, but they also take into consideration any affiliation. So any, um, and that could be subsidiaries, that could be branches that you have in other states, even globally. So they take anybody affiliated with your company into consideration. Well, when you're venture backed, if you're, um, if the venture company that's, that funded you has either control ownership in your company, so 50% or more of your company, and or throughout the terms that you sign when you were raising that round, there's some control um, rights that you gave that investor, um, then that the SBA and the qualifications kick in. So at that point, um, the at that point they may take into consideration not just the employees that you have immediately but the employees of the entire portfolio of that investment fund so any company within that fund um, that you they will lump you in that and then they would take into consideration all of the employment um, and this has been a conversation honestly that has been going on years um, in the past is not new but I think it's even more emphasized now because of what we're dealing and because of this particularly the, the CARES Act. Right so if, if you're a startup and, and you're backed by um, venture capital and um, say you've got 50 employees and um, the, the, the people who are backing you have nine other companies that have um, 50 employees, uh, except for one of them has 51. So that puts you over the 500 um, employee limit. So you, you could be pretty much out there doing things on your own and have a clause in, in your funding contract that, that gives uh, them this kind of control that would classify you as a, an affiliate of all these other companies that you really have been nothing to do with, right. um, other than you get some of your money from the same place. And uh, I, you know, it's pretty easy to see the problem there that you could be a small company that's really struggling and, and not be able to access these uh, the, these CARE Act funds because um, you happen to be affiliated with, um, in some degree, to uh, to other companies uh, uh, that would, when grouped together, would, would raise you above that minimum number of employee limit. Exactly. And I think it all goes back to control um, and, and uh, you know, whether uh, the business owner, the founder still remain control of their company, or again, it doesn't always have to just be on ownership, right? Um, it, it also can be if in your term sheets, you signed off any control rights, for example, you um, enable even minority investors to have any kind of control over um, having quorum in board meetings, over selling, over exiting, like you, you need to look at that and really talk to your investors and, and look at the terms that you signed in because it really just comes down to control. Um, and that's how the legit, um, that's how the clause works, right? So they take a look at who really owns the company, who makes decisions on behalf of the company. And, and unfortunately that, um, that often disqualifies people. But it sounds like based on that um, article um, that uh, there's been talks with Treasury and that's not gonna be an issue um, for, for startups. So that's a, that's a great thing. Um, and even before that, you know, the argument the argument from some of my colleagues that, you know, were arguing that, well, venture back companies have access to faster capital, right? They can go back to their investors and maybe say, hey, infuse capital, as opposed to tapping into this, uh, this program um, from the federal government. Um, but that's not all, often the case because it has to do with, are those, are, are those investors, um, do they have funds that they can actually deploy to, to reinvest and infuse in the companies? Um, so there's a lot of variables that go in there. 
Then the other thing that I would also argue is that, you know, less than 1% of companies, of small companies, so we're talking 30 million of small businesses in the United States, less than 1% of those ever access venture capital. So we're talking about a, about a very small number of companies that even if they went after the maximum number allowed for a loan, um, you're still not talking about the larger percentage of companies. Got it. Uh, any, anything else that, um, uh, any other kind of help that might be out there for startup companies that, um, you know, we haven't talked about so far, that, you know, if you're, if you're a startup founder or if you're thinking about it, um, um, or obviously if you already have employees and, and are being affected by the coronavirus pandemic, um, what kind of options are out there for you? Yeah, so we actually uh, compile a list of grants and other programs that are available um, from government, private, um, even foundations and, and private corporations that are trying to help startups any way they can. Some of them are cash grants, some of them are uh, zero percent loans, some of them are uh, just tools, online tools that you can use um, and leverage. So if you go to our website, www.stitchguru.com, um, then you can access that list there. Um, and that's important too, because even with the SBA and all of these um, uh, loans that are available, lenders are still struggling to figure out how to deploy that capital. And, and again, all the eligible eligibility and all of those things. So if you can start applying to other sources of funding um, and start going after um, other sources of capital or other type of help as you wait for this other thing um, or as you apply for this other thing, I think that's crucial. We also made available in, in the same website a list of active uh, funds that are, they have their fund already, already raised. LPs are still in place. And so they're ready to deploy capital despite the situation. And so that list is also available on the website. Got it. Well, Erica, thanks so much for joining us and um, wish you the best uh, of luck, uh, both to your family and all of your business interests. Thank you. Thank you for uh, taking the time, Dale.